Hi there, my name is Brandy, and right now I'm standing in the main gallery of the Reynolds Alberta Museum here in Metasquin. We get our name from a local businessman, Stan Reynolds. Stan's first business was a used car dealership, and he had a particular slogan, Stan takes anything in trade. It was true, he did take anything, but he preferred the old mechanical stuff, like cars, trucks, tractors, and planes. Eventually, Stan's collection got so large that he offered to donate it to the provincial government. They accepted and built this museum. Since 1992, we have been caring for and displaying a number of Stan's artifacts, including this 1935 Chrysler Airflow. The Airflow was a car that was not fully appreciated in its time. Even though it incorporated truly groundbreaking engineering, its radical styling was quite polarizing. Some loved it, others hated it. When it came to sales, the Airflow fell short. They were only offered for four years, 1934 to 37, and only 55,000 were sold. The idea for the Airflow came from Chrysler engineer Carl Breer. He wanted to apply aerodynamics to automobiles. Back then, most conventional cars consisted of a big box for the people that sat behind a little box for the engine. Those two boxes were plopped onto four wheels and that was known as the two box design. With the approval of Walter Chrysler, Breer and his colleagues Fred Zader and Owen Skelton got to work. Their first task was to identify the ideal automobile shape. Another engineer on the project reached out to a well-known aviator, Orville Wright. Yes, one of the Wright brothers. A small wind tunnel was constructed at the Chrysler factory based on Wright's recommendations. Small blocks of wood were cut into various car shapes and mounted on tiny chassis to be tested in the wind tunnel. 50 different models were tested that were about one-tenth the size of an actual car. By 1931, they settled on the ideal automobile shape. The car should be wide at the front and narrow at the back like a teardrop. The car should have smooth surfaces with minimal blunt edges and no crevices. That meant no protruding headlamps, no spare tire on the running boards, and no humpback trunk in the rear. These results represented a massive change from mainstream car design. In fact, the Chrysler engineers discovered that most conventional cars were more aerodynamic going backwards than they were going forwards. Another groundbreaking feature of the Airflow was its all-steel unit body construction. Now today, most cars and even some SUVs employ unit body construction, but this was not at all common in the 1930s. Unit body vehicles require the body and the frame to be one single structural piece. In the Airflow, this piece was made of steel, not wood, and it had interconnecting bars that resembled a truss bridge. Along with determining the streamlined shape of an automobile, the Chrysler wind tunnel tests also proved that the engine belonged in the front of the car, which was standard. In the airflow, the engine was brought even further forward to be positioned directly over the front axle. A lot of the engineering innovations in the airflow also improved rider comfort. With the teardrop shape, the front seat was able to be widened by 10 inches, creating space for another passenger. This sedan comfortably sits six people, three in the front and three in the back. With its unit body construction, riders sit within the frame, not on top of it. That, along with better shock control and the scientific weight distribution, meant that airflow riders no longer had to endure a bumpy ride, they enjoyed the floating ride. After more than six years of development, the Chrysler and DeSoto Airflows debuted in 1934. They were presented at the New York Auto Show that January, while it was met with mixed reviews, orders did start to come in. Chrysler, however, was not showing the public its finished airflow model. Prior to 1934, rumors were circulating that the other two big car companies, Ford and General Motors, were also producing a streamlined car. 
Chrysler, having worked so hard on the airflow, rushed into production. The airflow was unfortunately undergoing road tests in the early months of that year, and small adjustments were required before the cars could be shipped off to their new owners. These delays created an opportunity for General Motors to launch an advertisement questioning the safety of the airflow. Now Chrysler knew that there was no truth to these claims and they sought out to prove it with some highly entertaining and unusual ad campaigns and stunts. First, they went down the road and the wheels of the airflow to test its hydraulic waterproof brakes. Next, they recruited a shotgun sharpshooter to blow out one of the tires while the car was still in motion. Then they tested the strength of the windows with a baseball and a baseball bat. They put a race car driver behind the wheel and encouraged him to roll the car over and keep on driving. Finally, they took it to a cliff that was 110 feet and sent it off. The airflow was a little beat up, of course. However, mostly everything was intact. The windows and the doors still worked and the car could safely be driven away. If that doesn't dispel the rumors of safety concerns, I don't know what would. So if the airflow was this special and innovative car, what made it so controversial? For a lot of people, it just came down to looks. People thought it was ugly. <laughs> It's also important to remember the context of the Great Depression. Not only were people not as able to purchase new cars, they weren't that interested in one that was aerodynamic and futuristic. As the years continued, the airflow style deviated further and further from the streamlined prototype. Our 1935 airflow shows the revised results. The front end is more tapered, which makes the hood ornament more prominent, like that of a conventional car. These horizontal bars have been added to the waterfall style grill, as well as these chrome strips lining the sides to create character. Some other aerodynamic features that were incorporated into the car's styling are its fenders flowing out from the body, reinforcing the teardrop shape, its split windshield that can be cranked open to increase airflow, its covers on the rear wheels that look sleek but also reduce air resistance, and its hidden luggage compartment, which helps create a tapered rear end, but it's a little awkward to access. Complementing the Airflow's streamlined design was its Art Deco styling. Chrome plating was common in Art Deco designs, and it is definitely incorporated in the Airflow. We see lots of chrome plating on the front end and the side. Inside, we see that the seats are framed with chrome plated steel tubes. One stylistic feature of the dash is its attractive, glossy surface that brings out the grain in the wood. Except that's actually not wood. As convincing as it may be, the dash, as well as the window surround, is all metal painted to look like wood. Although the airflow was restyled every year to satisfy the public, production stopped after 1937. For Chrysler, the public's response to the airflow really scared the company. For the rest of the 1930s and into the 1940s, Chrysler only produced conservatively styled cars. Despite the airflow only lasting four years, streamlining really took off. It was common to see headlamps that were part of the body and tapered rear ends. Manufacturers were using unitized body construction. Engines were placed over the front axle and passenger compartments were bigger and generally more comfortable. The airflow, it seems, was a sacrifice. It failed, but it allowed the ideas of streamlining to enter the public consciousness. Our vehicles today are a product of the developments that the airflow introduced. This airflow was restored here at the museum using period correct materials and manufacturing processes. It was one of the first cars that the shop staff restored after the museum opened. It took over several years, over 2,000 hours and $25,000 to restore. And the result is this beautiful and operational airflow that you see beside me. Thank you so much for tuning in to our virtual tour of our 1935 Chrysler Airflow. We hope to see you at the museum soon.